something real god is looking for someone real be real live from the be real lounge you're with us in the lounge your hosts daniel lewis and brother brad haynes how you doing well good morning man good morning i tell you what a morning it has it's been wild i tell you i never thought we would get started because uh the gates of hell coming against us (laughs) through my urinary I mean, issue. I've been like a little schoolgirl, man, running off every four minutes. Literally, we haven't been able to record because of me. No, no. It's pretty ridiculous. All kinds of stuff going on there. But, you know, hey, that's the way it goes. I mean, here it is. Like, what, an hour and a half, two two hours later since you've been here, and we promised we weren't going to do that again? (sighs) Who's going to jump right into it. Oh, man. But, you know, everything happens for a reason. It is. All these days ordained. So we were talking, man, we're just going to be as real as we can, hold nothing back, let it all hang out, just, you know, because we really don't have anything. Once That's the again, name of the and, show. Um, yeah, this is being real. So we'll just we'll just let it all all hang out today. Man. I, just, I want to start out most definitely by what we've already mentioned anyway, just me and you talking about it, just thanking the Lord for another day. Yeah. I'm thankful for every day. But when they're sunny like this, I mean, we've we've had like the last couple of weeks just kind of gray and gloomy. I don't know why that affects me. I don't know why I let it affect me. Let me just say it like that. Yeah. It ain't really affected me. It's I'm letting it affect me. Well, it but, does everybody. Go, I'm sorry. You know, no, it's all right. When the sun comes out, I mean, it's just like a, it's just an amazing. You see everything. Just I see everything kind of differently. Yeah. And I'm so thankful that the sun is out. So I just want to thank the Lord for another day. And it's a beautiful day. What a it's gorgeous a, day. And here we are in the lounge. I mean, a brand new day. Yeah. Everything, he said, what, his mercies are new every morning. So whatever happened yesterday, we can go to him for a clean a clean slate. And I'm real thankful for that. And I'm so thankful that it is a nice day. And, I mean, I think that, why well, I know that all of us, man, we go through that when, when the sun goes away. And that's a a parable in and of itself i mean doing without the sun you can do without it for a few days but by the third or so day you really start to to need that and it's the same with him the son son i mean we can't go without him and you know you get so used to it if you do go without it that that becomes your reality and you know i mean people living in seattle and stuff like that that's their they don't they don't feel that like we do because they're they've acclimated to going without it and i think that spiritually we can get to a point where we acclimate to where that becomes the norm and then the sun's almost too bright and it's like ooh, i mean your eyes can't even really take it so just going with the seattle thing i mean like us here we're so used to the mountains yeah Uh, yeah i go by lover's leap i'm still amazed by lover's leap in the springtime i'm still amazed by lover's leap in the fall especially when the leaves are changing it's awesome yeah i'm amazed by it but i live in the mountains so i'm like constantly seeing mountains all the time and but it's like when i go on vacation to the beach yeah praise the lord for that yeah it's like a whole different it's like wow I mean, there's times, and there's usually that's all I ever do now since I've gotten older when I was little. It's all about the fun, fun, fun. Let's go play in the water. But now I'm on the balcony or I'm standing out there in the sunshine on the sand, and I'm just feeling the wind and feeling the salt and feeling the the warmth of the air and the sunshine coming down. Usually it's really hot and the sand's really hot, but I'm just like, (sighs) I mean, I do that in the country too. I love it. I love going outside. It's only two or three things I like about wintertime, and that's going out at night because the sky looks completely clear. You can see all the stars. It's amazing, isn't it? And I just love to breathe. But I'm, I guess so, I've gotten so used to the mountains. And then when I go down to the beach that one time out of the year, it's like a whole different kind of feeling. You yeah. know, it's a whole different – it's a whole different – you know, atmosphere, whole different surroundings are totally different. Everything's flat, no mountains. Yeah. And the, even the air smells different, tastes different, feels different. The people are different. Yeah. And you go out there and it's just like, 
And I can even see pictures on the internet or on Facebook or something like that of somebody down there taking pictures. And I can kind of feel myself there, but it's nothing like it's not actually the being there. No. And I can, and when you were talking about that's the way we feel with Jesus, we get so used to being in this world and so used to having all this stuff around us, the cell phones, the Facebook, the whatever we're doing in our lives. I mean, there's so many million more things to do besides having that relationship with Jesus that when we finally do get that taste once again of Jesus, Jesus, getting into his word, having that relationship with him again. It's that, I can feel you. I feel you there. Uh, The Holy Spirit is there. I can feel you. I don't need any music to have that feeling. I just have to have him. Well, I mean, that's what it's all about, Daniel. When you were saying that, it was made me think of how we spend our, our human lives where we're trying to get up the mountain. We just always trying to get to that top. And then once we get there, all we can think about is coming back down like we back to the rob bell thing he's like when you get on top of the mountain the the hebrew word for what he wanted moses to do was to be on the mountain that's it like not to be anywhere else but see that's some that's one reason why we're we're not happy and why we struggle all the time is because wherever we're at we don't want to be there we want to be somewhere else and that's a reason too that people don't remember anything like you only remember things that are important to you and that you're present in and if you don't have many memories it means that you are always looking towards something else and thinking of something else rather than being where you are at and Man, I've done that so many well, times. I do it every day. It's I, a yeah. struggle. I, yeah. I mean, I'm in all these things I'm saying, I'm right there with you. I'm not saying I'm better. I've got something figured out. It's just, I mean, it's the, what we all have in common is human beings. Go back to the, to the Rob Bell. He, he yeah. illustrated something in that. Everything is spiritual about being with his kids. Yeah. Open that up for us. Do you well, remember that? I mean, yeah, I do. I mean, do you remember when he was saying that it took his kids like three? They they kept saying to him, "Dad, Dad, Dad," and it just drove him nuts. And he it started to really get on his nerves. And he was like, "Why do they like? Why don't? Why don't they just say Dad?" And it kind of irked him. And then after a while, he was playing with them, and he realized why they were doing it not because they had an issue, but because he did, because he said it took him about three times to get him to be present. Like he was off somewhere else. And by the third time he'd usually come around and say, hey, what, do, what do you want? He always, he was always thinking about something else. He was Man. thinking about what he had to do at work or he had to take the car to go get the oil changed or he had to, you know, he's always, he was with them physically, but not there, but mentally he was off somewhere else. And we've all, we've all done that. I've, I've done it big time. Well, and you see it now more these days than anything with these cell phones and stuff like that. You can be in the same room with four other people and they're on their phones and they're, engaged in their phone whatever they're doing and you're talking to them and they it's like did we even have that conversation well they don't remember anything you were talking to them about i mean that's to me that's the issue and that's why i love the gospel and jesus teachings because it it applies to all humanity throughout any time that's exactly what the issue is people separate jesus and his teaching from their daily life and and what they got going on he talks about all this stuff he talks about the fact that we're going to be distracted like that and that we have to fight to to be wherever we're at so Mm -hmm. it's like if you're doing if you're doing the technology stuff then do it be completely there when you're doing it and then if you're engaged with someone be completely engaged but see we have to fight in our own minds to be wherever we're at because we can be on the technology stuff thinking about where other things that we're doing and then we make mistakes we're not we're not engaged so i don't know man it's something that has plagued humanity forever but we really have to deal with it in this modern age. I it's mean, a battlefield. We, we, it is. It, and it's just always to, been. And it, I think, you know, it's getting worse because we're adding more stuff. It seems like we're adding more stuff. There's more. But it's stuff. usually the own. It's usually you know they've always found something. Yeah. Humans can always they'll always reach or look or they're always moving forward with something else. Yeah. And when that becomes God, oh, the the amazing things really happen. You know, that's when the the fruit is really produced. The good fruit is produced. Now we just got, you know, it's a lot of just bad fruit. And I've produced a lot of bad fruit in my life just by, you know, going with what the world has had me to do. Focusing on the world instead of focusing on him. But I've also had that focus on him before. 
and I know where it can take me and where I'm going and where he has me. And, and that's why I'm doing this yeah. because I can see, you know, and that's why I want to tell others to get into his word and have that relationship with, and with him, because you have that, you, you find that meaning we've, we've I've run it into the ground by saying it so much, but I'm just going to continue to keep saying it because it's in my heart to say it because I've tasted this. I've tasted of him. And I know how good it is. I've tasted that living water. Yeah. And I want people to know, you know, how good that is. And to, I see so many people struggling. And I was there. And just with all kinds of stuff, depression, despair, uh, fighting, you know, just constant struggle within that we've mentioned before. And, and I see that. And I'm like, man, they just don't see the way out. They don't see the way out. I didn't see the way out. Well, I mean, I'm not going to get into this whole thing, but it's back to the reason why the first stumbling block is the way that it's been packaged, hmm. that we package it. Okay. And so then we tune out, we just categorize it. It's the schema stuff. We, well, I already know about the Jesus stuff, but we really don't because what it is, man, I mean, you spend all this time in psychology and if something happens, I mean, I did that for years, man, counseling, behavioral special people come and you give them the psychological perspective work on the stuff. What, what I realized through the reading of the Bible is Jesus, that's what it is. All of the things that we're all seeking to make our life better and why is my life bad and what do I need to get things in line, he has the way that works. None of the other ways work. They'll work for a little while. But, It'll feel like it but temporarily. Then, but then your discipline fails and you, you get away from the, the program. See, what is different about Jesus is he has a, he has a program per se, but it's a living program. See, it you That's what can't, we were designed for. Well, everybody wants an answer, Daniel, like a, a black and white answer. And while he has those, to find them, like you can take one bit of his teaching and you'll think you understand it. And then if you keep seeking him in it and you keep your eyes on him, he'll show you that you really didn't know it at all. Take you a deeper level and be like, well, I didn't even see. You're never going to be able to figure him out completely. You're going to be able to follow him, but trying to figure him, we're supposed to we take it. I don't want to because he's all wisdom well, you, and all knowledge. I mean, and, all wisdom. Take a breath for a second. All wisdom and all knowledge yeah. is God. Everything. I know. Dan. Everything. And look, it's going to take us our entire life that he built it that way to where we're supposed to look at his teachings and spend our entire life trying to understand the meaning for ourselves and, and what it means in our walk with him. And that's what that's what it's all about. And you do that and then he overflows, you know, to anyone that's around you. But that's you, you have to do that. And and most of us want to just get the thing and then I don't have to keep seeking him. But see that's that when I read the Bible, it's it's all about the seeking, 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 going to want to be with him. That you had sent me that Francis Chan sermon. Abide in Jesus. I watched or I listened to the whole thing. And I really, I thought it was the most powerful Francis Chan sermon I had ever heard. But one thing that really stood out to me in the the end part about it was when he was talking about the prayers and, and the fact that he was looking at Solomon's prayer and then he looked at David's prayer and he was actually seeing that David, despite all of his issues, you know, he just wanted to be with God. Yeah. He just wanted, that was his only heart's desire was to just want to be with God and that that was the best prayer. And that's linking back from last week, man, where we were talking about the surrender. And what I understood was this, and man, I still battle this. It's not like I got it figured out. But what I did for years with Jesus was just genie in a bottle stuff. I just ask him for things mm. that I wanted. And, and this is the kicker, and act like I was doing him a favor by approaching him and praying mm. anything that that was my connection that I'm praying and aren't I a good boy for praying something for myself <laughs> <laughs> and and man when he let me see kind of what a jerk I was being and and that that isn't well that's nothing I didn't even know what it was yeah but when he showed me that man everything started change and then when we actually what we see is he said if you pray anything according to my will well, his will is that you just want to be with him. That's it. And check this out. This is what I really believe, and, and I really do with all my heart. The God of the universe, through 
the the way that we can understand it. I've explained before that God is too powerful for us to understand or interact with. So it's it's like the power plant down at Kibler Valley, man, trying to plug a hair dryer into those things that would fry it. <laughs> so he sent his son in the form that we can understand to relay these teachings to us because he loves us in a way like Jesus is the adapter to get to God. Jesus is God, but he's that form of the adapter to let us plug into God so we can approach the throne. If we do that through Jesus. And only we, only through Jesus. Well, there's no other way. No other way. He's and, the only adapter. Well, he is. And if we want to be around him, he's going to fill us with his spirit, and he's going to tell us in our heart in those intercessions, and we're going to pray things of the spirit. So it's going to be him. And it's not about the more that I follow Christ, the more convicted I feel about asking for him to do things. Instead, man, the more that I get into him, I just realize that he's allowed me to be with him, that that's the whole deal, that I can actually be with God. That's it. And he does things I've noticed automatically. I don't even ask. He just does things, and I'm so grateful. I'm like, Lord, you know, I, I didn't even, you know, I, I, you knew I needed it, and I didn't even know that you knew I needed it. I mean, little bitty things, and we can go into. I mean, I could sit here and go into all this stuff, but again, like you said last week, it's kind of personal stuff. You'd probably think I was a lunatic, but I don't care. But I mean, well, it's just, it's, it's a. Uh, you have to. He, he shows and reveals himself. Uh, when you just, it's just like what he talks about with a father that just loves. You know, even us being good, would we give our son a stone if he asked for some bread? You know, he just automatically gives this stuff. I mean, it's just an outpouring of his love to, you know, and that's not why I'm in the relationship. It just happens. Yeah. I just wanted to add that on there because it's just, you know, just him just having that relationship with him. I'm happy with that. Well, man, just when, to be able to have that, it, and I wouldn't have that without Jesus. And Daniel, when I think about the relationship, Tanya and I were talking about it last night. When you fall in love with someone, you have to talk about them. Like no one could keep you from doing it. Like when you really fall, think about it. When you're in love, you have to to say it. So I question if we're really in love, if we're not sharing that. We love, I've written this before years ago, before I ever got on the technology or anything. So this isn't a personal thing, but we all want to show pictures of the people that we love and the things that mean something to us. So if Jesus really meant something to us, we would want to express that love. And not in some cheesy fabricated way, but a real way, just like it, you want to share like pictures of the people you love. You say, hey, look at this. I mean, but I, I saw that when I read that and it said, anyone who acknowledges me before men, I will acknowledge them before my father. But whoever does not acknowledge me mm-hmm. before men, I will not acknowledge them. And man, when that hit me five, six years ago, I realized that I wasn't doing that. I was acknowledging him through the the things I was doing instead of actually in my life acknowledging my love for him. Well, the reason why was because I really didn't have that love for him. Yeah. I, I have to be honest. I was trying to get to him through my do-goodery. You know, I know that isn't Same right. Same here. And then I even went to intellectual route me, me of too. trying to get to know him just oh, you know, sure. on an intellectual level and just knowing all about him instead right. of actually knowing him heart wise. Sure. Like I can know my mom or my dad. And I mean, I can sit down and know everything about them, you know, when the year they were born, all this stuff. But to actually love them and to be with them and to spend that time with them and actually know them. You know, and then it takes that time. It takes that time to spend with them to get, actually get to know them. Well, I mean, per, personally, and it ain't, it ain't an intellectual thing of, oh, I know when they were born. I know the year, the date, and all that. You know, I do know that stuff. But that ain't that's what not makes the me relationship. love them. That's not the relationship. That ain't what makes me love them. Well, we have to love him with all of our mind, mm-hmm. all of our heart, all of our spirit, and all of our strength. Okay, that one hit me hard, too, because all of your heart is is like this feeling stuff, right? All of your mind is you can't leave out the learning about him. See, no. I've met a lot of people that want to leave that part out. That's yeah. like, well, I've been saved. I don't need to know all that. Well, how would that work out? You get married and you say, well, I just want to get married to you, baby. But then she starts to tell your film. Well, I don't really want to know that there, baby. I, I mean, yeah. I don't need to know. I'm not into that. I don't want to know these stories about yeah. you or your history. I don't need your, to know your favorite color. 
I mean, come on, you want, if you're in love, you want to know that. So all the heart, all the mind, all the spirit, which is we've been deceived. A lot of us, and I've struggled with this a lot of my life. What is being a spiritual being? Okay. You have to love him with all your spirit. That's something that's been left out in the modern world. We don't even act like spiritual beings, man, as we're just like drone bees, like, you know, like that movie, The Giver. I mean, we're just all like that. And, and we are spiritual beings. So, and then with all your strength. So then you we're made up of three parts. I've pointed this out just like uh, the Trinity, mm-hmm. you know, it's Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and people tear their hair out about it. I don't know what that means. Well, do you rip your hair out about the fact that you are three in one yourself, That's your it. mind, your body, and your spirit? Okay, and all those three things work together, you know, and then make you, you can't live without the, and the expression of those three is the strength. Yeah. So you take everything that you are, and then you actually put all of your humanity into loving him that way and see that's, that's really where everything takes off. And then we, we keep fighting and fighting to hold on to that because every day we're going to be assaulted to, to be distracted, not to do that. And that what we find is when we do that, all of those other things fall into place. Just like, I don't know if you want to talk about it, but I loved that story that you alluded to. I don't know the whole story, but I'd like to know the story, man, of how he came through and gave you the book. And I mean, we're going to keep it at 30 minutes today, but we might have time to talk a little bit about faith too, if we're meant to, might not, might not get there, but I thought the story was cool. Oh, the crazy love yeah, story? Yeah, share it, dude, because <laughs> yeah, we were talking about it last That's pretty week. neat. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Uh, last Wednesday, we were talking about, uh, I think on maybe a show before that, we were talking about Francis Chan. Yeah. And uh, when I first met Brad, when I first met you, <laughs> we yeah. were, uh, I had already heard about Francis Chan, and he had come out with <laughs> this book, me. Crazy Love. And uh, you had actually got the book. You said, I'm going to jump on. I've got the book. I said, yeah. He said, I've read it. Tanya's read it. You want to borrow it? Cool. So I borrowed it. This is like five years ago. And I uh, actually loved the book. It was really good. I mean, really good. It's like nothing I've ever read before. And uh, he's come out with a couple other, I think, two or three, four, maybe other books since then. I went ahead and uh, purchased them through Amazon. Got a really good deal on them. Never purchased Crazy Love. Right. And uh, kind of just been sta- sticking with the Bible uh, as I went through the studies and the Lord led me into other things. You know, Francis Chan would come up and I'd read his other books and stuff like that. Uh, last week we were talking about him and uh, I just happened to over, I was like, you know, I listen to Adrian Rogers uh, yeah. when I go to bed right. uh, after I read or whatever. I'm, I'm turn on some Adrian Rogers and listen. And I said, hmm, you know what? I've never listened to Francis Chan. I've read his books, but I've never listened to him. And the first sermon that popped up was that abide in Jesus. Wow. And after I got through listening to it, it was just, you know, I was like, wow. It's a really good He's one. being real. Yeah. He's a be realer. Yeah. This is, I've never, you know, I've read the book and I knew he was, but I'd never heard him speak. Right. And uh, so I immediately sent that to you via email. And, I, you know, it just got me thinking, I, I would love to read that crazy love again. It's been about five years. I'd like to dig into that again, even though I'm reading a book right now. I, I'd love to have it on my shelf. That way I could just grab it, you know, if he right. led me that way. And I felt like I wanted to. Anyway, long story short, uh, me and mm-hmm. the wife had went out and uh, went to Eden. And we were going to go to Walmart afterward. And uh, we were on the way to Walmart. And she said, I'd like to go over here to Goodwill if that's okay. And I said, man, eh, I really don't want to go over there. And she said, well, I, I would like to. And I said, well, let's go on in there. I'm kind of a glutton when I was eating anyways. And so I need to go over and walk some stuff off. So I went into Goodwill and started walking around, went over there. And they, if anybody's been to the Goodwill and Eden, they know they probably got about 30 or 40 books in there. It's not much on library. Gotcha. As far as all the other Goodwills go, you got bookshelves of books and they're just piled up in there. This one's like a couple of cages full of books. And uh go walking over there, just happened to go by the books and I go, wouldn't that be weird if that crazy love is over here? I mean, it just kind of popped in my mind right. when I was looking He's through. He's like saying, hey, I'm getting ready to Just to looking blow around the you books. Away, yeah. Man. I walked around the other side of this metal rack shelf thing they got. Not really made for books, I don't believe. And there was a pile of books laying flat. And on the edge of the corner, I seen Francis Chan. I said, you got to be kidding me. That's amazing, man. I mean, really, you got to be kidding me. Right. So I just reached up, grabbed it, slid it out from under the other books, looked at it, and it was crazy love. Wow. I said, you have got to be kidding me. Yeah. 
I mean, I was like, I was bouncing. I immediately bounced over to my wife and I told her the whole story because she didn't even it's, know. It's, she knew that we'd been listening to Francis Chan because sure. she'd asked me. We, I heard a couple of his sermons, listening to him at night, the Abide in Jesus, and then the next night I listened to it and she asked me, who is that? We listened to him last night. And I said, that's Francis Chan. She said, I've never heard of him. I right. said, I said, I've never listened to him before. Right. I've read his books, but yeah. I've never listened to him. Yeah. And uh, so when I told her, she just was like, wow. And I said, the Lord is just, I mean, it's little things like that. Somebody might just think that's, there's no such thing as coincidence. Man. I was. That's exactly what I was going to say. There's no such thing. It's, it's I mean, just God remaining anonymous. I could run the statistics on that thing. You know, and it's it, imp- and it's improbable. It's, it's, it's significant, like stati- even just mathematically. So, I mean, I don't need that. But, I don't either. But, but it's there. Just, it just still blows my like, mind. Even just talking about it, I'm like, Pfft. well, I mean, that's just he gives us the desires of his of our heart, and he put on you, hey, read this now. And then weird, he never calls you to do something that he doesn't provide. So he's like, I want you to read this, and then he leads you right to it. And oh yeah, I had a little sticker on it, seventy five cent. I mean, I love seventy five cents. It's it's awesome. I mean, and I wrote you back, and I'm not going to go into the whole story, but the same exact thing happened to me where I wanted Wild at Heart again. I'd given that away, and I wanted it again. And that's a John Eldridge book for men. It's a really great book, and I'd gone years without it. And one time, I said, "Hey, get this." I asked Tanya if she would order it for me, you know. So she did, and when it came, it was the study guide instead of the book. And I hadn't looked at the study guide, so I was like, well, that's cool. But I was really bummed, you know, and I you was wanted uh, the book. I did. And, and I was like, well, I guess I'll have to reorder it. But I didn't do that for I just kind of chilled on it. Then the same story, we went to Goodwill and I was looking around and the one that I was in had hundreds of books and they I mean, this one popped out to me, Wild at Heart. It was there the wow. the same week that I went through that issue where I was <laughs> bummed and wanted it and couldn't find it. I, I go there a lot. I had never seen it before. I looked through. There was no more books like it. So it, it, I took it to Tanya, and she was all excited, too. We, like, talked about the same issue that you had. And so, I mean, I actually I, – that's why I believe him, you know, and all of that and, and the, the faith thing and – that we have to trust and put our reliance on him and then leave all the results to him because it's an amazing adventure. And he has those little things around the corner to let you know. It's just like your your spouse or something just give you a little note, say, hey, I love you. It and, makes your day. And you know. It's made my week. I mean, I was just like, this is really weird. I mean, how golly. You feel him working in your life. Yeah. And just like, like when in a I, tangible way, when I was talking to you about it, I had I put this little thing on on the, on the email when I sent you about everything that had happened that when I got the book, and it was like God amazes me again was the first thing I put. But then I'm like, well, why does he? Because he's God. Yeah. I should know that he's going to amaze me. But it's just these little bitty and the big things and the little bitty things and the little bitty, you know, it wouldn't mean nothing to anybody else. But it does to you, yeah. and no one can ever take that away. No, like, it's just really weird. I mean, it's just like, uh, you know, it's just a, like it's you just personal. said, it's a personal. It's just like a relationship we have with your wife or, you know, whoever you have it with. And they well, just give you, you wake up and there's like breakfast already made. Well, isn't it, or a little note just saying, you know, hope you have a good day, love you. Yeah. You know, just a little bitty thing. It just really wouldn't mean anything to anybody well, else. It's isn't it just like Christmas time coming up, people starting to do their shopping or whatever. And you want, you've heard someone say that they want something. Yeah. And then you search to find that to make them happy if you really are trying to give a a real gift you know you're not just trying to well i got the name on the list i gotta cross them off you really think now what did they what do they like what have they said that they liked and and jesus did that to you knew you were looking for it then you wake up and boom right there it is and he's just like yeah i know you wanted and i think when you have a relationship with somebody it, it comes way before christmas Cause I, I have these. Oh yeah, I have it's these, not about that. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I know, no, no, I know what you're saying, but it's like, you know, I there's certain people like my mom, dad. I see stuff during the year. Yeah, and I'm like, you know, they would really love that, and I'll get it and hold yeah. it until Christmas. Of course, you know, that's a little bit. I mean, I've hold it all year. I right. got something in my closet that I've had there since February, he'll, waiting on Christmas. He'll you know? do that too. Lord willing, I might not even make it till Christmas, but you know, hopefully they'll know that it's theirs when they. <laughs> searching through my stuff but i mean it's just it's 
you know, when you have that relationship with Christ, it's the same thing. It ain't necessarily got to be the Christmas, but it's weird that he he has these little. I don't know how to explain it. It's just well, a, I think you did. It's. I mean, he just comes through for you and yeah. gives you the desires of your heart at, at unexpected. It's that times. relationship, and he don't even have to do that. I mean, no. he don't have to do that, and you see it working. So, well, you see him working, and it's just so. You know, it makes it makes it it means it means something. What was that when he said, you know? you people know a father knows how to give good gifts to mm-hmm. his son. You know, he's like, well, I not do a whole lot more than that. He's he like, does. you don't give somebody you love a snake and <laughs> you know, so it's like, he's always doing that, man. And it just makes you smile and it lets you know that he's, he's in it and he's in control and that he can do anything he wants and lead you anywhere. We just have to be willing to surrender to, to what he wants to do in That's and it. through us and in our life. So, I mean, and that he loves you. Yeah. He really does. And well, that he loves you. I mean, that's just the bottom line of it. He really does. And he, it's just amazing to have a God like that. Uh, the only God. That, I mean, he just, it just, you know, he still blows my mind to this day because there was so many times I struggled and so many, you know, throughout my life that I didn't, you get to a point to where you don't even think nobody cares. You know, you get kind of, you kind of push people away. It's not like they don't care, but you push them yourself away and you don't even really care about yourself. Right. I've been into that situation where I didn't even care about myself. And then to find him, somebody that loved me through all that. I mean, it was like my, <laughs> my grandma. I love her to death. Both my grandmas. I love both my mimas. Uh, but my one, she never judged me. She just always told me about the love of Christ. And, you know, Matt, no matter what I'd done, and she'd heard all this stuff, she never brought that stuff up. She would always just be smiling, happy, and welcome me back into her house and say, hey, when are you going to come down here this summer and stay two weeks with me? You know, and it, she never judged me. I had the long hair, had all this stuff going on that I knew that I, I didn't want to be around her doing all this stuff, you know, and I would never smoke around her or, uh, Lord forbid, anything of the other stuff or talk bad around or anything like that you know but i just had that respect for her because she always showed me love and then to realize that the lord and the god that she's talking about actually exist and she was showing that love to me the same way he shows that love to me and to everyone else you know if we just accept that and it just it i needed him and i had him you know i needed him i have to have that kind of, i have to have that kind of love i have to have that we all do and the only place we're going to get it yeah is through him i mean it really is i mean other people can point us to it but he will never i mean and that's the point of you can approach him and our prayers should be to just want to be with him so that's where i'm gonna leave at it it at for my part is just i want today to want to be with him really like wherever he's at i want to be there and I want to be soaking up whatever he's doing. And I know that if I do that, everything else is going to work out. But look, there's nothing else that matters. And that's not just us saying some, uh, you know, pretty talk and like we're going to just be surrendered to him. That's really like I'm going to fight for that all day and want to just be where he's at and and understand what that means and be there. And when I'm there, be there. And um so that's it. That's he, it. He's there. He's waiting. We can really, we really can approach him, that's and it. that's the whole deal. Is that the God that is holding everything together that that can change anything? We can actually be with him today. That's amazing, ain't it? He and, is amazing, and he'll work and do do some things. But we have to be willing to want to be there and to put down everything else and the way that we think about things and everything that we are to just be there. That's it. So and thank God for making that possible. He made that possible. He did. He yeah. made not only us possible, but he made the love and the relationship that we have that we broke. Yeah. Back. He he brought that relationship back through his son Jesus Christ. So let's just obtain it. Praise God. That's all I got. That's all I got too, brother. All right, man. We'll I just see. Hope, you. They, hope they get into the Word, get to know Him. Yeah. Have that relationship with him and find that love that you need, that we all need. Well, we can't let anything else be more mm-hmm. important. Nothing. And that's challenging. It it's is. challenging it for is. me today. So it is me too. Let's just uh, obtain it. We'll see you next week. Praise the Lord. Lord willing. Praise the Lord, brother.